The Mouse and the Motorcycle, Chapter 13, Part 2. The thought of the motorcycle put an end to Ralph's daydream and made sleep impossible. After tossing about on his bed of Kleenex, he got up and poked his head into the knot hole. Keith was awake, lying on the back on lying back on the pillows with his cards beside him. He smiled wanly at Ralph. How are you feeling? asked Ralph. Sort of tired, answered Keith. Ralph climbed through the hole. Where are your folks? They went out for a little while. They'll be back. I'm supposed to take a nap. Are you going to? asked Ralph. I'd rather talk to you. Keith leaned over and set the motorcycle on the floor. Want to ride it? He gasped. Do I want to ride it? Ralph could scarcely believe he had heard correctly. You mean you'll let me? After the way I lost it for you? You proved you could be responsible when you brought me the aspirin, explained Keith. You're more grown up. Thanks, said Ralph modestly. I guess mice grow up faster than boys, Keith sounded as though he longed to grow as rapidly as a mouse. You grow a little bit every day, Ralph said, as he removed his crash helmet from its hiding place behind the curtain. I guess you're right, agreed Keith. My dad measures me every six months against the door jam of our kitchen back in Ohio, and each mark he he makes is higher than the last, but I never feel myself growing. You wait long enough and you'll be a grown up. Ralph felt as if he had said something very wise as he slipped the rubber band of his crash helmet around his whiskers. I guess so, Keith slumped back on the pillows, but it takes so long. I grew up, didn't I? asked Ralph. You said yourself I had become a responsible mouse. Yes, you did, said Keith thoughtfully. I guess that's part of the secret. Just getting bigger isn't enough. You have to learn things like not taking off down a steep hill on a bicycle when you aren't used to handbrakes. Stuff like that. Ralph walked with a slight swagger to the motorcycle, grabbed the hand grips, and threw his leg across the seat. He remembered to pick up his tail before he started. Plum, boom. He took off across the carpet and circled the room, covering the rough parts under the dresser and chair and coming to a halt beside the bed. She has good balance on a rough road, said Ralph with authority. She's a mighty fine machine. Say, Ralph, said Keith, suddenly sitting up, how would you like to come with with me when we re leave the hotel. Come with you? Ralph was stunned. He had expected to live and die in the Mountain View Inn, and now he was being offered the opportunity for travel that he had dreamed of. Yes, come with me to San Francisco, then back to Ohio. Ralph's first thought was of the motorcycle. If he went with Keith, he would be able to not have to be separated from the motorcycle. Keith must have sensed Ralph's thoughts because he said, you could ride the motorcycle every day. Ralph was silent. He had begun to think of other things like his family, the permission he had earned to visit the ground floor, Keith's family, and how they might feel about a mouse. Come on, Ralph, said Keith. You could travel in my pocket. Mm, your mother doesn't care for mice, Ralph pointed out. Not a running around loose not round, running around loose, agreed Keith, but she let me keep a couple of white mice once. I still have their cage at home. You could be very comfortable in it. Comfortable in a cage? Ralph was horrified. No, thank you. Oh, uh, come on. Would you like to be shut up in a cage, demanded Ralph. Well, no, but neither would I, said Ralph, especially now that I can finally go down to the ground floor. In his disappointment, Keith slumped back on the pillows once more. I guess I knew you really wouldn't want to come, he said. I understand. I sure will hate to see this motorcycle leave, said Ralph, and suddenly, and said Ralph, and added hastily, you, and you... Two, of course. The boy and the mouse were silent. Both were thinking of their wishes and their regrets that their wishes could not come true. Keith rolled over on his side and popped his head up on his fist. Would you like to keep the motorcycle, he asked. Keep it? Me? Sure, said Keith. I can save up my allowance and buy another one when we get back to Ohio. You really mean it? Ralph could scarcely contain his excitement. Keep it away Keep it for my very own, of course. How come? Ralph wanted to know. I'd just like to think of you writing it, said Keith. You know, if you grow, grew up enough to be trusted with a mouse-sized motorcycle, maybe someday I could earn a big one. The excitement drained out of Ralph. I can't. I don't have any place to keep it. It's too big to go through the knot hole, and I couldn't hide it behind the curtain forever because I've heard that after Labor Day, when there aren't so many tourists, they take the curtains down to be cleaned. Hmm, that is a problem, agreed Keith. There must be some place in a big hotel like this where you could keep it. Ralph sat on the motorcycle thinking as hard as he could in the closet. He couldn't get it out of the, if the door was closed. Under the bed, eventually it would be found. How about downstairs, suggested Keith. I could carry it down for you 
before we leave. There must be a good hiding place down there someplace. That's the big old clock my ancestor ran up, said Ralph thoughtfully. Nobody ever cleans under it, but frankly, I don't care to have it striking over my head. Keith thought a while. How about the big television set in the lobby, he asked. The noise shouldn't bother you because you would only go under it at night when everyone was asleep. Yes, Ralph was excited. That's a perfect garage. I saw it when I got the aspirin. The legs are just high enough for the motorcycle, but not quite in high enough for the vacuum cleaner attachment. Then it's settled, said Keith, and then added rather sternly, Ralph thought, but first you must ask your mother. Ralph dismounted and ran to the knot hole. He was gone several minutes before he returned to announce in triumph. She says I can keep a motorcycle if I promise to drive carefully and wear my crash helmet every single time I ride it. Swell, Keith was just at as excited as Ralph. When we check out, I'll hide it for you while my folks are busy paying the bill. I can't thank you enough. Ralph fastened his crash helmet once more. I never thought I would have a motorcycle of my very own. Keith lay back on the pillow and smiled at the mouse mounting the motorcycle. It will be fun think of you riding around that big old lobby when I'm back in Ohio this winter going to school. And when the teacher asks us to write a composition about the summer vacation, I can write about it meeting a brave mouse named Ralph who rode a little motorcycle. I'll tell about your bringing the aspirin, except I'll have to call it a pill because I can't spell aspirin. Of course, the teacher won't believe it, but she'll probably say, I show imagination. Ralph felt proud to think he was to be written in about in a composition in far off Ohio. Boom, boom, boom. He grabbed his tail and gunned the motor and took off heading for the threadbare part of the carpet that made such a good speedway. Round and around he sped, faster and faster, until his whiskers blew back and he was filled with joy of speed. He longed to wave Keith, but he realized a good driver must keep both paws on the hand grips. He glanced up and noticed that Keith's eyes were closed. The boy had fallen asleep with a smile on his face. Ralph dragged his heels to break the motorcycle. Quietly, he parked it beside the bed, and quietly, he removed his crash helmet and hid it behind the curtain. He did not want to disturb the sleeping boy. Ralph could wait to ride the motorcycle. It was his to keep.